Hi, my name's Julia Lofthouse. I'm the Mammal Project Officer for the Barks, Bucks, Ox and Wildlife Trust and I've been running the Water Vole Recovery Project for the past seven years. So I just want to tell you a little bit about water voles and the conservation work that's going on to help them and why we need your support. So water voles are the largest of our native vole species. We've got three species native to the UK, field voles, bank voles and water voles. And the main difference between three species is that water voles are much larger than our other two voles. So they're the size of a small rat, whereas the other voles are the size of a mouse. And water voles have a rounded body shape, which all our voles have got, and they're a rich chestnutty brown colour all over. If you're lucky enough to see a water vole, you may see it swimming along in the water. And when they swim, they use quite a basic doggy paddle style, so they're not really strong swimmers. They sit quite high up in the water, and they can only actually swim around for about 10 to 15 minutes. And after that point, their coat becomes saturated and they have to return to dry land. So you're very lucky if you actually spot a water vole whilst you're out and about. And um, what you'll normally find is the field signs that they've been there. So the things to look for are mainly their drop-ins, which are very distinctive. There are small brown pellets. If you break them open, you'll often see lots of green, fibrousy vegetation inside. And they're about the size and shape of a Tic Tac sweet. They leave these in little piles along the water's edge, which we call latrines, and that's their way of marking their territory. Another good thing to look out for are water vole feeding signs. So water voles are herbivores, they eat a huge array of different plants, uh, lots of different grasses, sedges, rushes and herbs. And when they eat, they're quite selective. They'll take a piece of vegetation, they'll eat the juiciest, fleshiest part, and they leave the rest behind in neat little piles. So the piles of vegetation that you find are lengths of vegetation up to about 10 centimetres long and they all show quite a distinctive 45 degree angle cut. So that's a really good indicator that water voles are present. Once upon a time water voles were a very common sight on all our waterways, found on all our rivers, streams, ditches. But they've suffered massive decline in recent years and it's estimated that from the late 1990s they declined by nearly 90%. There are several reasons for the decline. One important thing was the loss of their habitat. So in the 1950s, there was a sharp increase in sheep grazing as farmers were paid per head of animal they kept. This meant that fields were overgrazed and grazing occurred right down to the water's edge. And in that situation, you find there's no vegetation along the watercourse. The banks become very soft and shallow. So it means that there's no food for the water voles there, no cover from predators, and they're not suitable for them to burrow into. This is a series of photographs sent in to me of a water vole site in Buckinghamshire. And it's quite useful to illustrate the importance of vegetation for the voles. You can see that the site's very intensively managed, so there's no vegetation along the water's edges. And it means that there's really no food or cover there for the voles. Voles were living there in small numbers, but this heron actually visited the site each day and predated the water voles. Herons are creatures of habit and this bird just used to go back knowing that he had an easy supply of food there. And because there was no cover, the voles had very little chance of escape. One massive problem for the water vole has been the introduction of American mink. American mink were brought over to the country and kept in fur farms when fur was fashionable, but they quickly escaped and have colonised a lot of our waterways. There was a sharp decline in water voles during the 1970s, which seems to directly coincide with the spread of American mink through the waterways. The problem with mink is not only are they voracious predators, but they're also very good swimmers. So water voles have lots of natural predators, and their natural defence mechanism is to dive down into the water and disappear into one of their underwater burrows. They'll stay there till danger's passed. The problem with mink is that the female mink is small enough to enter their burrows, so they really have no means of escape. So the Water Vole Recovery Project was set up in 1998 by the Barks, Bucks, Ox and Wildlife Trust in partnership with the Environment Agency, the Canal and Rivers Trust and Thames Water. So we work on all aspects of water vole conservation. A large part of our work is surveying and monitoring, so we know where we need to focus our efforts and how the water voles are doing. I've got a team of 50 trained surveyors who go out each summer and survey our waterways to see how the water voles are doing. It's important that we monitor each site regularly so that we can see if there's been any decline and where we actually need to focus our conservation efforts. 
Another important area of our work is working on mink control. So we work with landowners to provide them with mink rafts and these are a really useful tool for monitoring for mink and trapping them when necessary. We work to make sure that water voles are safeguarded in the planning process, so we flag up where developments have the potential to impact water voles, uh, try and make sure there is no effect for the voles, and where necessary and where we can, try and ensure that habitat is enhanced to help them. I hope you found out a little bit more about water voles and the conservation work that we're carrying out to help them. And I hope you can see how important it is that we're able to continue our good work. So if you are able to, please do support us.